I'm going to show you a really simple home test that you can do to determine if you have a calcium deficiency. Now, calcium deficiencies are pretty common, but usually not because the person is not taking a supplement or not getting it from their diet. It's mainly because either they're not absorbing it or the body is not utilizing it properly. So in this video, we're going to talk about the symptoms of a calcium deficiency and all of the other reasons why you might be deficient and then a real simple home test that you can do. Okay, so what are the symptoms? Well, number one, anxiety, irritability, insomnia, muscle tension, spasms or cramps, low back pain, constipation, high blood pressure, heart palpitations, frequent nosebleeds could be a calcium deficiency, soft fingernails could be another indicator, frequent cold sores, sunburns when you barely go out in the sun. Then we have hives. Having frequent fevers could be related to a calcium deficiency because calcium lowers your immune system. I remember with our kids, every time they had a fever, I'd give them a little calcium and it would go right away. Frequent hoarseness, chronic coughing, and difficulty getting to sleep. So calcium is a mineral that we need for our muscles, our bones, our tendons, our ligaments, and the nervous system. Calcium also acts as a communication between your nerves. And there's many things that affect the calcium absorption, okay? First thing is vitamin D. If you don't have enough vitamin D, you're not gonna absorb calcium that well. If you have sufficient vitamin D, you can increase the absorption of calcium by a factor of 20X, okay? That is a major increase in calcium absorption. And of course, so many people are deficient in vitamin D. Now, magnesium, if you're low in magnesium, you're gonna have a difficult time absorbing calcium because magnesium and calcium work together. Another factor is the hydrochloric acid in your stomach. If you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, like a lot of people over the age of 40 and 50 and 60, because as you age, you have less and less hydrochloric acid in your stomach and you need acid to be able to absorb certain minerals, especially calcium. Low essential fatty acids, like the omega-3 fatty acids, Essential fatty acids help you absorb calcium. And so if you're deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, you're gonna have a much more difficult time absorbing calcium. All right, next thing is low estrogen. Let's say you're menopausal and you don't produce as much estrogen. That can affect your calcium. Another factor is your pH. If you're too alkaline, and I'm talking about your blood, and normally blood should be alkaline, but if you're excessively too alkaline, you're gonna have a difficult time absorbing calcium as well. So you may deposit calcium in the eye, there's cataracts, and the teeth is tartar, and the kidney is kidney stones, and the joints is arthritis, on the bones as spurring. So unless the pH is correct, it's gonna be more difficult to absorb calcium. If you have gut inflammation, you're gonna have a much more difficult time absorbing calcium. So all of these conditions where you have you know, irritable bowel syndrome, or diverticulitis or Crohn's can greatly affect your absorption of certain minerals, especially with calcium. And the next thing is interesting, hypothyroidism. You need a normal thyroid to be able to help you absorb calcium. So if your thyroid is low, like let's say you have Hashimoto's, that can be a reason why you're low in calcium. Not to mention the hormone that the thyroid produces called calcitonin. If calcitonin is low, you may also have a deficiency in calcium. So as you can see, there's many different factors that go way beyond the dietary uh, aspects of calcium. But let's talk about how to determine if you are deficient in calcium. So what you do is you take this blood pressure cuff, just a standard blood pressure cuff, and you're gonna wrap it around one of your calves. You're gonna pump it up and you're gonna record when you start feeling a cramp. And if that number is 200 or less, suspect a calcium deficiency. And of course, if you have peripheral vascular disease, I don't want you to be doing this test. Now, there could be other reasons, but this is a pretty good indicator if you're deficient in calcium. Now, if the pressure is between 200 to 220, you have sufficient calcium. And if you're between 220 and 240, you have the optimum amount of calcium, but you don't need to go above 240. And the units you're measuring are millimeters of mercury. And what happens when you're deficient in calcium is you have a lot of muscle cramps at rest, okay? Especially when you're sleeping. And this test just uh, magnifies that problem a little bit more 
so you can determine uh, where your weakness is. So in the description, I'm going to put these numbers down below and describe this uh, in detail so you can actually refer back to it. Now, if you have a calcium deficiency, before you start taking calcium, you really want to make sure that you're solving the correct problem because it could be a lot of other factors. So really quickly, I want to give you some additional information. So let's talk about uh, hydrochloric acid. How do you know if you're low in hydrochloric acid? Well, you get indigestion. If you do, then that could be the reason why you can't absorb calcium, in which case you need to take something like betaine hydrochloride or more apple cider vinegar. Now with magnesium, it's a little more difficult. I mean, you can go get an intracellular test, which is um, more involved, but I just have a question for you. Do you consume a good amount of leafy greens? That would be a good um, indicator that you have enough magnesium. If you don't like vegetables and don't consume vegetables, uh, chances are you could be deficient in magnesium, in, in which case that's what you'd want to take to increase the absorption of calcium. And by the way, you're going to get calcium from leafy greens. Now, what about uh, essential fatty acids? Well, do you consume a lot of fish? Do you have inflammation? Do you have arthritis? Okay. If you answered yes to any of these, maybe you need a good omega-3 fatty acid or better yet, start consuming uh, more salmon or sardines, cod liver oil, okay? Things that are high in omega-3 fatty acids. The reason I like cod liver oil because it not only has the omega-3, but it also has the vitamin D at the same time, as well as vitamin A. Now, what about alkalinity? How do we know you're too alkaline? I've done some videos on this. You can check it out. But one uh, common symptom of being too alkaline, and I'm talking about your blood, is that you get this little twitch on your skin. It could be underneath the left eye, it could be anywhere on your body, a little, it's called tetany, a little twitch. That could be a factor, in which case you need to start drinking maybe some apple cider vinegar on a regular basis, uh, betaine hydrochloride, because once you start to put the acids back in, that can help reset things. But here's the thing, to really get your pH corrected, you just need to eat healthy and your pH will come back into balance. Now, what about low estrogen? Okay, well, let's say you're menopausal. Okay, this could be the reason. Uh, what can you do about it? There's quite a few things. I'll put a link down below if you are menopausal to get a little bit more information on that topic. Now, what about low vitamin D? Well, do you have a low immune system? Are you depressed? Do you have low back pain? These are all indicators of low vitamin D. Is it the middle of winter? Do you normally take vitamin D or not? Do you get enough sun? So in other words, you need to start looking at the other reasons why you might be deficient and see which root cause makes the most sense. Now, if you haven't seen my other video on calcium, I think that video would be the most appropriate. Check it out. I put it up right here.